this video I will show the spatial circuit that I created a few years ago that people call into to play around my switching system. This is an SF controlled circuit. I have two circuit cards, a Telabs FXO, which stands for Foreign Exchange Office, and an FXS, which stands for Foreign Exchange Station. You would never in real life have two of these cards back to back in the same shelf on the same circuit. There would be no reason for that. So effectively I am like two different central offices. One in one city and one in another. This is where they would typically uh, provide foreign exchange lines across analog carrier systems uh, so that you could take a phone number in one area and extend it to another area that may be a long distance call or if a customer had a PBX system in one uh, city and they had an office in the other city then they could have an extension off their PBX. This was all private line equipment from the 1970s into the early 1980s. There is still some SF circuits running in the United States uh, they are far and few in between and they would not be put in new, they would be just grandfathered old circuits that has not been changed for whatever reason. I have seen customers have circuits for 15 and 20 years and once it's established it's kind of forgotten about um, unless of course you are the one paying the bill for the circuit which some of these off-prem extensions uh, that were in Inter city could be many hundred dollars a month, and if it was an interstate circuit, it would probably be over a thousand dollars a month. In today's world, uh, in December 2019, I can't really see any practical reason for doing this other than old uh, PBXs that has not been updated, and also there's no longer really any true telephone people left in these corporations. They've handed it all over to the IT department and they have no clue what the stuff is, how it works, or why it's even there. So the circuit is not messed with and until it breaks or the company replaces their phone system and it's then uh, caught in a uh, engineering um, of a new system they could be left in and even dead for that matter. So I'm going to dial a CNET which is on the uh, telephone collectors network, private network. Uh, the number that will access this is 3770505 or a PSTN number of 541-327-4488. I have the receive side of the FXS, I believe it is, uh, connected to my paging system so I can hear what is going on. At this point we're listening to dial tone coming from a first selector. It's a dedicated selector and I will in a moment uh, move the camera to that selector and you can see it operate. Due to the size of the switching system I have here, the camera will have to be relocated multiple times to see different parts of the call being actually switched through the office uh, to reach a telephone number or a recording. So at this point I would dial zero and we're listening to a mp3 player recording of an old rotary uh, ringing machine that used uh, mercury type switches uh, on the ringing as well as the busy uh, tone supply. In this case we're ringing uh, or lit up a lamp on my number 3 CL toll switchboard and if I wanted to I could go over and answer the call on the switchboard but the switchboard is located in a different building and I would be talking to just myself uh, or dead air actually.
here I were dialing nine and the touch tone converter is waiting for an additional digit. It will not outpulse anything until I dial nine again. The tone you heard is accessing my magneto line circuit. I built a custom circuit so that you can call in and ring my magneto telephones. Due to the fact that I have phones in my house, I do not want to tell you how to ring the phones because I don't want to be woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning by somebody playing. But I did reach that circuit. Now, with the touch tone converter I have, you can sit here for hours between each digit um, and nothing is going to happen. So it will not time out, which most traditional tone to pulse converters time out. This particular one was uh, programmed so that if you dialed 911, it would dial a toll free number. Well, if you dial 911 on this circuit, you'll go to a busy signal because I do not have an outside trunk. So you'll go nowhere. I will dial a seven digit number to reach a busy signal. So the card that is on the right that has the red LED should be the FXO and then the card, I'm sorry, the card on the left should be the FXO and the card on the right would be the FXS. So a quick bit of information. When you do circuits that's over carrier, regardless of the type of carrier, if it's analog or digital, it becomes a four wire circuit which means the transmit audio of, we'll just say, the A office is then sent over two wires, the receive audio to the A office from the B office is over a different set of wires. So there are hybrid coils on each of those cards that convert a two-wire uh, conventional phone circuit into a four-wire carrier circuit. At that point, then you have SF transceivers on both of those cards. Right now, we have somebody who is playing with the circuit remotely. I am not generating this call, so we will just let it go through its normal course. I can tell by the noise, there's a, uh, they've dialed a number ending in 45 to reach the outgoing uh, 7A announcement system. I don't at this point have any of the dead levels wired to an announcement trunk. In the future that will be the case. I'll move the camera to the step switch for the next part of this video. I'm zoomed in on what I call my special first selector or special access selector is what it's technically uh, labeled as. This is the switch that is connected to the FXO, FXS, SF circuit. So I have the switch seized. So I would dial a zero and we're listening to the uh, ringing of the operator trunk. I will dial the access code again and I will dial a 9 and again nothing will happen and then I'll dial a 9 and we reached a no such number tone circuit. This was utilized in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and in some exchanges in the 50s. Primarily it was set up so when an operator made a call, 
through the toll network, which is a different set of switching uh, machines and uh, selectors. If they reached a level that did not exist, then they would reach that no such number tone. Every prefix is 10,000 numbers. But if you had a community of, let's say, 1,000 residents, they would not build the office out for all 10,000 numbers. They would build out whatever thousands group they chose for that exchange, and often it was the two, three, four, or five thousand group. Then the 9,000 group might have been wired to a set of selectors or through digital absorbing eventually reach a connector that had the payphone number. So you could dial 9901 for an example and ring a payphone, but the number it was really probably wired to could be for an example 3301. This was done so they did not have to add a lot of switching train. At this moment, someone else is playing with the switch, so we'll listen and see what they do. They dialed a vacant level as the second digit and they got a 120 IPM reorder. If I had the no such number trunk wired over where that went to, then we would have gotten or heard a no such number tone, but it was not, of course, there. I can move the camera to one more selector switch, which would be the fifth selector after this call. They dialed 5-1, and the 5100 group is blocked from being accessed from this particular selector. Okay, I would dial 3, 7, 7, 5. And that has reached my fifth selector. I uh, was mistaken when I said it would reach the fifth selector directly. Under some scenarios, that's a true statement, but not under this. So I'll dial five, nine, nine, and the line, of course, is busy.